Hi, teacher. There it goes. Hello? Hi, how are you, Ella? Alejandra? Hi, sorry, I was sitting. Oh, yeah, I was having a little bit of mm -hmm. trouble with the hangout, but it's fine, it works. All right. All right. How are you, Ahmed? Hello. 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 How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. Thank oh. you for ask. Good. Yes. Where are you from? I'm from Egypt. My name is Ahmed. I'm from Egypt. I live in Cairo. I'm 24 years old. Cool. Yes. Nice to meet you. Yes, nice to meet you, sir. Uh, well, I'm uh, Zach. I'm from the United States, and I'm 26 years old. Yes. It's nice to meet you, Zach. Nice to meet you, too. Mm -hmm. And Alejandra, have I had you in this class before? Uh, no, but I, but I went, but I was in one of your classes. I don't remember which one, but yeah. Yeah, I thought I remember um, you in a different class, yeah. Well, cool. Welcome back. Good to see you again. All right. Thanks. Um, I can hear a small echo. Are you using your speakers, Alejandra? Hello? Yes, I am. Oh, uh, okay. Maybe. Uh, better? Yeah, that's good. Maybe it's picking up on the uh, on the microphone. But it sounds good. Sounds good All right. now. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and start. Okay. Um, I don't know what happened to Ahmed. But this is a this is a vocabulary class about um, whether animals or other things that aren't human, non-humans, if they can use language. So if they can use language. Um, so. Um, I don't really like going over all and this. I think that that activity I've done before. You've done this one? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I was trying to remember. And, oh, no. No. Am I confused? <laughs> I guess, guess I'm confused because the that document, it looks like... Um, some document that I've watched before. Oh. oh. But it looks exactly the same. Well, I've never taught this one before. Mm. Um, sometimes we teach the same class, but at different times, so that other people can, can see it. Maybe, maybe. Um, well, um, I invite you to stay, even if you have uh, done this before. Um, so did you go over these words? Well, 
like do you know these verbs Um, okay, well, um, since no one's really here, I'm just going to teach to the YouTube class, I guess. Um, so we've got the verb cite. Cite, to cite something is to take it out of context or in context, uh, and we can cite poetry, you can cite a passage in a book. Um, but yeah, citing is to mention or to show proof of an example. Cite. To show proof of an example. Yes, like a quote. That is the proof of the quote. That's what the cite citing is to mention another thing. Um, devotee, someone who is devoted, someone who has is going to put all their energy into something. So a devotee. or just to vote um, to give up and appropriate to or to concentrate on a particular pursuit so yeah yeah that's a good example to vote to basically uh, sign yourself up uh, to earn all your energies. So like to, uh, to take a vow to do something like a job, etc. Yes, to vote. We're just going to go over the verbs, and then we're going to see the other words in the context in the paragraphs. So uh, we won't have to go through all of these. So uh, incorporate. What is to incorporate? Yes, to include. Very good. To include something. Um, to take in or include as a part. So that's one part. To include. So a longer definition would be to include one part into a whole to incorporate. Um, how about infer? What is it to infer? To guess, speculate, surmise, to hint, imply, suggest. Yeah, that is also the number one definition to deduce the problem's origin, to derive by reasoning. Yeah, very good. And how about manipulate? What is manipulate? To manipulate. Uh, 
Yep, you can manipulate an object uh, and use it skillfully um, or to influence someone uh, in an unfair way. That's to manipulate. Uh, unify. Unify. Uh, sure. So to unify, unify is to bring together as one. That's to unify. And then last, violate. No problem. To violate is to break and fringe. So to break a law is to violate. You know, Laws are violated. Um, so do something uh, by force or disrespect something, violate a human right, violate. Um, yeah, close to violate, if it would be a violation of the law to invade someone's property and violating the law. All right. So very good. Thank you for providing your uh, your answers there. Uh, hi, Mustafa. Mustafa, does your microphone work? Well, maybe he's just hanging out. All right. Well, um, let's go ahead and read these preview questions. So we're going to find out what do linguists study? What do linguists study? We're going to find out what a linguist is and what they study. How can you define language? What is the role of grammar in language? How is grammar used in language? What linguistic problems have you experienced in learning a foreign or second language? So it's difficult to learn a foreign language. Um, so yeah, if, if you, anyone would like to share um, what problems maybe they've experienced learning a foreign or second language. There you go, yeah. Linguistics, linguists study all the language functions. Alejandro, what happened to your microphone? I was muted. Oh. So, uh, Alejandro, what can you define language? How would you define it? Well, I define language as a as a communication system uh, composed as well as signs, uh, sign, no, signals. Sorry, um, words, uh, letters, um, and uh, a visual. Uh, uh, for example, assemble. Uh, m most of the, I think that's my my concept of the language. Cool. So, what's the role of of grammar in language? 
I think the role is uh, organize the ideas to bro broadcast and in a correct way because for example in English uh, when I say heard alike it's incorrect because the the person it goes uh, at the end when I'm talking when I'm talking about someone who is not uh, close to me yeah in the Spanish it's right because we used a lot of sentence with the subject with the um, the person first because the person is making the action yeah in yeah. English as, as I said before in English is on the contrary way <laughs> Yeah, totally. So the uh, I know in Japanese you would say uh, you always say the verb at the end. Um, so like you're always putting the verb at the end, and you just change the ending of the verb to make it a polite uh, verb or a formal uh, verb. So yeah. Yeah, in Japanese, it's, uh, it's a common example. Yeah, they, for example, uh, did you heard when Jora uh, talks? When, when who? Yoda. Star oh, Yoda, yeah, yeah. Yoda. Yoda doesn't uh, look, uh, doesn't uh, mention first the person. They may, uh, he talk he first uh, mentioned the action at the end mentioned the the person yeah that's the style of the Japanese language grammar yeah yeah, yeah mainly the role of grammar yeah, is to create a structure that language can follow so that everyone uh, can understand one another in a basic way so I know I had some linguistic problems learning Japanese, Spanish, and French. Uh, what about what about learning any second languages for you, Alejandro? What what's well, the the most strange thing is I made mistakes with Spanish, which is my native idiom, but in English I. I haven't uh, uh, um, a little bit mistakes, like uh, for example the past, the present. Uh, I was a little bit confused on the grammar time, and in the Spanish, I confuse the words bring and carry. I say I said it uh, a little bit different because when I was here in my house. I said, uh, "Oh, carry, carry, carry me the, the salt." When actually, it's bring me the salt because I'm here in the house. <laughs> so, you know, that was, uh, and also with the word uh, "go" and "come," I also had mistakes since I was a little. But uh, what? But I realized. Uh, now I realize that mistake, so I try to fix it. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I had a lot of trouble speaking um, Japanese. I would usually leave out um, a lot of little parts that you're supposed to use uh, in between the words to, to form a grammatically correct sentence. So uh, I feel like I, I would be speaking really confusing language, but yeah, yeah, it can be tough, but yeah, learning a second language is fun. So let's see, how do animals communicate with each other? Give some specific examples of animal communication. What do you think? Well, I think uh, body language. For example, when when the dog uh, shakes 
his tail and lifts lift it, uh, it means that he is happy, he is excited because he is going to give a, he give a, uh, give a ride or, or because the owner is here at, uh, at the home. Mm -hmm. um, for example, when the cat uh, lifts his back, yeah, and the and on and also the his uh, his fur is lifted, it means that he is uh, ready to attack. He's scared and he's ready to attack the enemy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then uh, same with uh, you know, like. Lizards, you know, they, they have certain ways of showing how they communicate. Like they get all big, stretch out their body to let you know that they're going to attack you. Uh, body language whipping you with their tail. Um, um, yeah, yeah. And then I guess uh, the eyes too. All animals use their eyes to uh, to communicate certain things. Um, how is animal communication different from human communication? It's like we said; it was more body language. Anything else? I think both use the body language. The difference is the animal communication is based on the colors. Yeah, they are more visual than us. Uh, for example, when uh, when an animal or a plant is poison, you can see it. Uh, you can notice because. Their colors are very, very bright, very uh, uh, extravagant, very extravagant. Uh, yeah, when yeah. you um, and in the case of the human communication, uh, I've watched a documental about uh, the human communication, and an expert said that the ninety-nine percent of our communication was based in body language. So the last person is when we, um, when we use it uh, with the words. Yeah, I heard that too. It's really amazing and it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. And yeah because I can say, oh, I'm, I'm fine, uh, but, but, uh, but my arms are crossed and I'm look um, Look, someone like I'm going to kill you. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that's that's <laughs> that's an example. Yeah. Yeah, and it's and it's true. And also, that body language can help us uh, how to identify someone that is lying. Yeah. That's yeah, funny. Yeah. Uh... It's making me think of my girlfriend. <laughs> Have we ever gotten into a, a fight or something? She's like, I'm fine. <laughs> Just like, not really look like she was fine at all. I'm like, I know something's wrong. But yeah, humans do that. It's, uh, it's really interesting. What about uh, what kinds of animals have been taught? To communicate with humans. I know dogs have. What methods have they used to communicate? How successful have they been? Uh, well, the first part of the question was what kind of animals have been taught? Uh, for example, uh, gorillas, monkeys, uh, parrots, um, I think there's nothing else. Yeah. And, well, I mean, uh, excuse me. We've taught we've taught monkeys, you know, uh, lots of primates to communicate with us. But same with dogs too, you know. We use uh, lots of communication. Really? And uh, the methods that we use are uh, the best.
they look at our eyes to see what we're doing. I watched a dog documentary. And you can just put two cups with a, one has a treat under it, one does not. And yeah. the dog will look at your eyes to know which one has the treat in it. Yeah. Yeah, the matter, um, the second, uh, that's, that would be the second part of the question the, about the methods that we use to communicate uh, with, to create a communication with the animals. Uh, in the case of the dogs, um, I think it's more like a punishment, punishment price. Yeah, you do, you, you're doing something great. You get, uh, you get the price. But when you are wrong, you have to be, uh, you're punished. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of, it's kind of the same uh, when parents uh, educate their children. It's the same system. Yeah. And in the case of the uh, monkeys, I I watched that, that one of the met methods was uh, the signal communication, signal language. And in, in the case of the parrots, it's uh, verbal. Yeah. So, how how successful have they been, Mustafa? Uh, uh, does your microphone work? Or, I mean, it, it obviously works. I hear uh, sound coming out. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I muted it because I keep hearing background noise. Yes. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, cool. All right. Hey. Uh, so Must Mustafa, how successful yeah. has uh, communication um, with animals been? I think it depends on the kind of the animals. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Not not every animals, but some animals. Yeah, have I know better, that. Uh, have, have, have better communication with humans. I know, you know, dog and human communication yes. is mm -hmm. very successful. You know, you can teach a dog uh, to do a lot of things. Um, yeah. And then same with, uh, same with like, like chimpanzees as well. <clears throat> chimpanzees mm -hmm. can, uh, you, know, you can teach them just about anything that they can do physically. I saw a chimpanzee uh, make make noodles, make noodle soup. Yep. Um, so yeah, it's really neat. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, so can non-humans use language? Uh, can you guys read this text? Can you see it? Yes. Awesome. Um, how about Alejandro would, oh, okay, Alejandro, would you like to read the first paragraph and then we'll just switch back and forth between the three of us? The paragraph one, right? Yep. This okay. whole, whole Since, uh, until animals. Some linguists say, say that it is the ability of humans to acquire and use language then different then differentiates differentiates them. them from all other animals. Yet other animals too use symbols to communicate uh, be this perform a dance that tells other bees where they found sources of nectar. The grants 
and gestures of chimpanzees signify varying desires and emotions. These forms of communication do not necessarily have the grammatical characteristics of language, however. Not, not notwithstanding not these obvious. obvious differences, some experts have devoted many years of their careers to ongoing studies of the linguistic capabilities of animals. Cool. Does anybody have any questions about that paragraph? Yeah, since it is vocabulary class, I just want to make sure you guys understand. Um, so, an, you know, an expert, expert is somebody who is highly skilled in a certain field or, or thing. And then devote, of course, we went over, so like a scientist has devoted many years of their career to ongoing. So that's um, research that just keeps on going and going to linguistic capabilities. Any questions about the first paragraph? No? Okay, how about second paragraph? Mustafa. Okay. I, I can, yeah, no. Over the last 40 years, yes, this is better, several researchers have asserted that non humans can master language. Chimpanzees and gorillas have been the most popular targets of study because at yes, maturity they are estimated to have the intelligence of two or three years old children who are usually well on their way to learning language. Dolphins too have been studied because they have a complex communication systems and exceptionally large brain relative to their body size, it would seem that if these animals were unable to learn language, their gen general in intelligence could uh, be blamed, could not be blamed. Instead, failure would be attributed to the absence of genetic makeup that Permits language learning. Very good, yes, yeah, so genetic. Genetic, yes. So, uh, maturity means like when they're older um, and adults, they have the intelligence of two or three year old children. So they're, they're about as smart as. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then com complex communication. Um, so dolphins have a complex communication system. That means they have not a easy. Lot of, yeah, not easy. They have a lot of different yes. sounds. Yes. Uh, very, very difficult, and there's lots of different, um, different ways that they talk to each other. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I totally forgot about that. Like whales, and dolphins. Well, cool. Any questions about that paragraph? Mm. No? Okay. So I'll go. The question of whether non-human mammals can learn to use language is not as simple. Is not a simple one. For at least two reasons. First, language is more than just communication. Defining just when animals are exhibiting that something more, the source of dependence. Bait. What seems to differentiate human language from the gestures, grunts, 
chirps, whistles, or cries of other animals is grammar, a formal set of rules for combining words. Also, because of their anatomical structures, non-human mammals will never be able to speak in the same way that humans do. To test these animals' abilities to learn language, investigators, therefore, must devise innovative ways for them to communicate. Um, Alejandra? Yeah? Would you like to read this next paragraph? Uh, since David and Anne Primark? Yes. Right. Sorry, I see. All right. Uh, David and Anne Primark told their chimp, Sarah, to communicate by placing differently, differently shaped chips, each symbolizing a word on a magnetic Magnetic Board, 1971. Lena, a chimpanzee, study, studied by Duane Rumbaugh, 1977, learned to follow instructions to communicate by pressing keys on a specially designed computer. American Sign Language, ASL, the hand gestured language used by deaf people has been used by Beatrice, Beatrice and Alan Gardner with the chimp Washu and by Herbert Terence with Nim Chimsky and Kensi, a bonobo, commonly known as a pygmy. pygmy Oh, lost. I think I'm Z. Pygmy chimpanzee. Pygmy chimpanzee. Studied by Sue Savage Rumbo. 1999-1993. Learned to recognize spoken words and to communicate by both gesturing and pressing word, word symbol keys on a computer that would speak for him. Wow, so are you familiar with um, uh, oh, what's his name? Stephen Hawking. Do you know Stephen Hawking? Mm -hmm. So he uses the same system. He can't actually talk because he's uh, paralyzed, but he uses um, a computer to make the words for him. Um, so that's the same exact thing that um, the chimpanzee does. So it learned to recognize spoken words and communicate by both gesturing with sign language and then pressing word symbol cues on a computer that would speak for him. So that's pretty amazing. Do you think so? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, want to have language too. Mustafa, you want to do the next paragraph? Yes. Um, I can see clearly the text. You can't? Um, it's better. I can try it. Um, now, okay. Uh, studies of these animals suggested that they could spon spontaneously. Uh, I, 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 how can I pronounce Sets, it? Uh, spontaneously. Spontaneously manipulate combinations of words to refer to think that were not present. Wish you Lana Sarah knew or or Nin yeah. and, and and can't see can't see all oh, 
I can I can't see it. Is it getting blurry? It's, it's, not, it's not clear. For it's better. It is mastered between 130 and 500 words. Their voc vocabulary included names for names for con concrete o concrete objects. Such a, such a apple as pie, apple or pie. Verbs such as wrinkle and ear, eat. Adjectives such as happy and big and uh, ad, and adverbs such as again the animals incorporated the words into sentences expressing wish uh, yeah, wishes wishes such, such as such as. Um, you tickle, you tickle me. Or if Sarah good, then apple. Sometimes the sentences refer refer to things in the past. Finally, all these animals seemed to enjoy their communication. I'm sorry devices and used them spontaneously to interact and form, form mutual bonds with their characters. Yeah, they're caretakers. Okay, take very, very good, yeah. So, um, so the animals incorporated um, the not words into there. Not, not included. Hmm? They included, yes. Mm -hmm. Included those words in that they learned into their sentences. Um, so they can manipulate words spontaneously. As what's, what, what does mean mutual bonds? Mutual, mutual. bonds. That means they both... Um, like they both like each other, mutual bond, mm. like like friends. Mm. Friends are a mutual bond. Mm. Yeah, they're communication devices where the little computers. As a, as a, a, a group of. A group okay. of. Mutual bonds is a gr group. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's okay. And then, uh, yeah, they could, like, right on the spot, they could manipulate combinations of words. So they could say, you know, certain words in their heads and manipulate them to be in whatever type of sentence they needed them to be in. So, yeah. Um, let's see how much we got here. All right, many of the preliminary conclusions about primate language learning were challenged by Herbert Terrace and his colleagues in the investigation of NIM. Terrace noticed many subtle characteristics of NIM's communications that seemed incompatible with the child's use of language. And he argued that animals in other studies demonstrated these same characteristics. So many preliminary conclusions. So before they were even finished um, with the studies, preliminary conclusions, the conclusions that they made uh, even beforehand were challenged by Herbert Terrace and, and his co-workers and colleagues and also the people who studied with him. Um, so you notice that the compatibility of a child's use of language was, was not the same as how a monkey used language. Um, so yeah. For the big long paragraph, Alejandro, would you like to read it? Mm -hmm. 
good. Uh, we uh, first. Yep. First, Tara Tara said the format of their sentences was always relatively simple and brief. Nim could use his isolated gestures or could combine combine two or three gestures, but the champ never used strings of words or clauses that con convenient more sophisticated or abstract message messages. Second, Terrace cited the animal's lack of spontaneity, creativity and expanding complexity and adaptation, which are characteristic or of children's language. Many of the animal's sentence were request for food, tickling, baths, baths, and other pleasurable objects and experiences. Other researchers pointed out, pointed out that chimps do not inherently associate same objects with heard words as human infants do. Finally, Terence question whether the exper experimenter bias influenced the report of the champ's communication. Consciously or not, experimenters who concluded, who concluded that champs learn language might tend to ignore strings that violate grammatical order or to reinterpret re ambiguous strings so that they make grammatical sense. For example, if Nim says someone holding a banana and signs Nim banana, the experimenter might assume the word order is correct and means Nim wants the banana, rather than the ban that banana belongs to Nim, in which case the word order would be inaccurate. Mm -hmm. So you guys have any questions right off the bat there? Teacher? Yes? I have some problem. Uh, I can't see the text if uh, Alejandro uh, speak or read. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I, mm -hmm. That's your uh, internet connection. Okay. Um, when you uh, when you're I getting some, information, I passed some some sentences. Okay. 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 Sorry, it's nothing I can do on this end. Okay. But yeah, um, the format. So the way the sentences were written, the way the grammar was. Um, was always really simple and brief, short. Nim could use isolated gestures, so just one gesture, or could combine two or three, but never used a string of words or clauses. Clauses are like parts, like ideas, um, that conveyed abstract messages, so something, something not you know, obvious. Second, Terrace cited, he showed proof that the animals lacked the spontaneity, creativity, and expanding complexity and adaptation, which was a big characteristic of children's language. So the adaptation, like when a little kid um, keeps learning, um, they learn on their own. So yeah, chimps don't inherently, they, they aren't really born with the um, the way to associate a seen object with a heard word. They have to be taught how to do it, or how to, how to, how to, uh, they have to memorize it. They have to be taught like what it is every single time. They can't just hear the words and have someone like talk about something like a book, like it's no problem and eventually the monkey will know what a book is. He has to be taught like, to memorize that this is a book. Um, yeah, and then 
whether they th are thinking about it or not, chimps learn language um, tend to ignore strings that violate, you know, they break the rules of grammatical order or to reinterpret ambiguous strings so that they make grammatical sense. Um, so yeah, they're not really sure if the, if the animal really understands nim banana as, as what they're saying it as. You know, maybe the, the animal doesn't really even understand um, what nim banana means. Does it mean Nim wants the banana, or that banana belongs to Nim? Um, they can't really, they can't really tell. Um, oh wow! Welcome, Stephen and Farhad. Well, Mustafa, do yeah. you want me to read the last paragraph, or do you want to read the last one? Okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I can. I can see that it takes. You can? I can, yeah, now. Linguists and psychologists, psychologists are still, moment, psycholog, psychologists are still not unified about whether or sophisticated mammalian cousins, mammalian cousins can learn language. Studies are ex expensive and take many years. Ac accordingly, the amount of evidence in the am amount of evidence in the area is minimal. Just a handful of studies, each based on a few animals. Nevertheless, two things are clear. First, whatever the ch chimp, gorilla, and dolphin have learned a much more primitive and limited form of communication than that learned by children. The second, their level of communication doesn't do justice to their oral intelligence. These animals are smarter than their language production suggests. In summary, it is possible to infer from the evidence up, up until now that humans have language abilities that are unique, but that under the right circumstance, circumstances and with um, on my screen now, Farhat Ali. Yeah, I can. Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, okay teacher. Yes. Where shall I where shall I begin? Uh, 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 I didn't uh, um okay. I mean that um the next paragraph or uh, oh, it's okay. Uh, just hold on a second. Mustafa, okay. can you finish? Yeah, I can finish. But the, under the right circumstances and with the right tools, other animals can master many language like skills. M language like skills. All right, cool. Sorry, we're we're done uh, with the with the article, um, Farhad. But we're we're discussing it now for this last five minutes. Um, so yeah, it turns out. Uh, linguists and psychologists are still not unified, so they don't all agree. Yes. on one idea, so they don't all agree on one thing, um, so that they're not exactly sure. Uh, according to amounts of evidence, uh, so there's actually a minimal, there's not very much, it's very little amount of studies. So nevertheless, anyway, two things are clear. Uh, first, Whatever they have learned is a much more primitive form uh, than of communication than learned by children. And then second, um, you know, those animals are really, really smart. And just because they can't communicate like we do doesn't mean that they're not um, more intelligent than what what uh, language you know we can 
teach them, you know, they can or can't use, you know. Mm. It's like, think about if a dolphin were to um, teach us how to make those vibration sounds uh, underwater, you know. Um, even if we use, like, our hands to clap or, like, made, like, motorboat noises with our lips or uh, tried to make a machine to mimic it, we still would have a limited understanding of how to speak to dolphins because, you know, it's just not what we're used to. So I think the same type of thing with, uh, with the monkeys, you know, it's like, it's just, it's just not how they were, uh, they're wired and made to, to speak. So they can't really do it a hundred percent. So in summary, to summarize for the, to say everything all in, in a short bit is, uh, it's possible to to surmise or infer uh, to just guess that from the evidence up until now, humans have language abilities that are unique just to us, but under the right circumstances and with the right tools, you know, other animals can use those uh, those language like skills. So yeah. Um, what do you guys? What do you guys think? Do you have anything to say about the uh, the article before we finish? Uh, teacher, uh, what does a uh, 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 sophisticated mean? What is the meaning of sophisticated? Sophisticated. sophisticated. That's um, like of a high level. Sophisticated. A sophisticated. Okay. Language is a uh, is one that ha is a very on a very high level. High level, okay, live. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Does anybody else have any other questions? Is there anything they want to discuss? No. No. Yeah, I was thinking about the dolphins, um, and yeah. I was thinking about the, the chimpanzees <laughs> and the gorillas, you know. Like, they could just be, like, copying to get things, you know, that they want um, about as well as, like, maybe a dog would, you know. It's like dogs just kind of, it's kind of like, you know, they want, like, attention or they want food or something, so they just do the things that they know will get them those things. So that's maybe exactly what the monkeys are doing. You know, they're just like, yeah, yeah, I'll do that, like sign language thing, or I'll I'll push that button to make sure that I get the banana because I'm hungry. So they're not really saying like, this is my banana. They're just saying like, I want a banana. I'm gonna push this button and, and get a banana. So yeah. Um, do you guys think that? One day we'll be able to talk to dolphins. Yes, no, maybe so. About the dolphins' communication? Do you think we'll be able to talk to them? No, I didn't. I didn't understand you. What do you want talking about? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I was just one. I was just hoping. I think that one day, you know, we should be able to communicate with dolphins using their their waves, or at least being able to understand them better, and making a you know recording their their language and figuring out what they're saying. But yeah, thank you everyone for joining the class. Um, class is over now. And, uh, All right, thanks. I hope you thanks, guys have to learn thanks, some thanks. new words. Thank you. Take care. Thank you very much, Zach. All right, bye. bye.